On today's episode, we are doing Wolves Wednesdays version three, and we get to talk about how the big bad wolves of Chicago are back and ready to make some noise in the American Hockey League. Your Locked On Hurricanes, your daily podcast on the Carolina Hurricane, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to a Wolves Wednesday edition of Locked On Hurricanes, your team every day, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you to the everydayer for making this your first list of the day, five days a week, Monday through Friday, talking everything about your Carolina Hurricanes, but also your Chicago Wolves. I'm your host, Zach Martin. I'm the credentialed Carolina Hurricanes beat writer over at the Hockey Riders. I'm also going to be starting a column on the Chicago Wolves called Wolves Weekly, which I'm very excited to get going as well. Also co-host at the Search Cast, which is a weekly Carolina Hurricanes podcast, along with all my dudes here at Locked On Hurricanes. But enough about me. You're not here to listen to me talk. You're listening here to my guest talk. And I am very excited to have this guy on. He is entering his 17th season as the voice of the Chicago Wolves, having some other stints with the Houston Arrows and also with the Iowa Stars and spent some time in the ECHL with the Texas Wildcatters and also the Waterloo Blackhawks of the USHL. I am super excited to have Jason Shaver join the podcast today. Jason, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Zach, and uh, enjoyed your first two Wolves Wednesdays with Courtney Mahoney and Chris Dubiel. So uh, I got big shoes to fill. And hey, I appreciate Hey, you know, shoes to fill. I don't know. It seems like it's just every show just keeps getting better and everyone just keeps getting more excited. So honestly, I'm just honored for you to take the time and talk to me today. I'm just, you know, excited to get, you know, know your story. And you know, I said a lot of fans probably don't know as well. So it's going to be fun to, you know, diving into your story, you know, seeing the progression of the team as well. And then also seeing the outlook of the 24, 25 Chicago Wolves. Cause I know I'm super excited to see them back in the Calder Cup playoffs. Cause it doesn't feel right when you don't see the Wolves kind of making a run for the Calder. But before we jump into everything else that's going on today, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDIHL for $20 off your first person. Now, Jason, I know you've been there and done that and seen a lot, but I want to jump into your story because, you know, originally from Apple Valley, Minnesota, you know, your grandfather was someone who was the voice of the Minnesota North Stars and Al Shaver and also is a 1993 Hockey Hall of Famer. And even your dad, Wally, was the voice of the University of Minnesota since 2001. Also, uh, go Gophers. I'm a big Minnesota <laughs> Gopher fan, even though I'm from Ohio, but I love my Minnesota Gophers, especially for hockey and men's and women's. But okay, just, yeah. Um, but what's that like just being able to have like a family legacy of you know, like your grandfather did it for someone with the North stars and then your dad with the university of Minnesota. And now you here with the Chicago wolves. Well, it was really helpful when I was going into college uh, as a hockey player and then realizing that uh, my hockey career was probably going to end in college <laughs> and just talking with, you know, both my grandfather and my father about what I might want to do uh, post uh when I got done with school, there's see Courtney. What Courtney's <laughs> a, a fire hey, guest. Courtney. I told you I think she was the fill. Oh, that's it's awesome. El Presidente, Courtney Mahoney, who does a little bit of everything for the Wolves that you, oh, yeah. you found out with. Um, oh, yeah. Hey, you know, honestly, they do seem to re rename it the queen of the queen, honestly, of operations at this point for all she does. But yeah, she was yeah. absolutely awesome to talk to on the, on the last ep on the last edition. But yeah, that was yeah, <laughs> that's yep, awesome. Yep. So anyway, yeah. So when I, when I was in school, it was just like, how do I stay involved in hockey? And for, right. for me, the, the family business was broadcasting. You know, when you grow up in a household where you have access to free season tickets to the, the Minnesota <laughs> North Stars growing up, you, you don't know how much of a luxury it is. Or right, you know, yeah. there's a concert at that venue or even going to Twins and Vikings games, always having access to that. I just assumed that everyone uh, had that. So I, I'm very thankful that uh, <laughs> right. they were broadcasters and not plumbers. You know, I'd be, uh, you know, snaking drains or something today as opposed to getting ready to, to call the Chicago Wolves opener here on Saturday night. I know for sure. I mean, you. I mean, obviously, you have to have like you know your favorite North Stars because you look back at just like how good those teams were even back in the day. Of course, you know making Stanley Cup final appearances. Unfortunately, you had to face the you know the Super Penguins at the time. But like, what were some like the big names that kind of like drew you into the North Stars back in the day? 
I mean, I was a huge fan, like live and die with them. Uh, my mm -hmm. senior year in high school, they did have that nice run mm -hmm. to the Stanley Cup finals, uh, which is kind of funny. Our GM, Wendell Young, or, who is now, uh, you know, taking a more uh, governor role with the organization with the changes in the offseason. But he was a right. member of the Pittsburgh Penguins. And uh, yeah. that was a heartbreaker <laughs> there. I thought they had it. Uh, you know, John Casey was the goaltender. I was a goalie growing up. So, and he was from Minnesota. So, I was a big fan of him. And prior to that, Donnie Beaupre was the goaltender, Jules Malash. So, I always kind of grabbed yeah. him, uh, to those guys. And then, of course, you had the 1980 Olympic star, another Minnesota, Neil Broughton. He, he yeah. was there long time so they had some great players uh you know basil mccray and shane Shirley dropped the mitts so you know when you're young uh yeah <laughs> the extracurriculars uh and uh the north division certainly had a lot of that when i was a kid it was yeah, no, for three hours <laughs> yeah for sure with all the fights of course you have cicerelli and all of them too and those yeah. are just those really good north star teams i mean honestly probably one of the best jerseys and logos in the game that's if you're talking about because everyone talks about like, the nordiques and all of them and Hartford Whalers, which are all yep. good in their own aspects. But come on, the North Stars were just so iconic because when you look at that end with the star, you know who you're already talking about. So it's like one of those like stapled historical retro jerseys and logos that you're just like, yeah, those are it for sure. Yeah, I've never lived in the state of Minnesota since the Wild came back. But when they went with the kind of throwback North Star colors, I mean, that jersey just pops. And oh, I yeah. Think that's kind of a, a shame of the nhl that you don't have the the green jerseys like the whalers and uh, north stars had you know we need more green in the nhl definitely need a lot more green yeah there's a lot of red whites and blues and stuff like that so it'd be nice to do, do a little bit of a change up for sure but and like you and you know got the north stars and of course your dad with the you know minnesota gophers which i mean yep. you look at just the historical of that friend of that you know program as well like that must you must have seen some really great Minnesota teams, especially back in the day, and even more recently too, because it's just it's almost automatic. There's always at least one or two, three, five guys that are making the NHL or at least getting drafted, just because of how yeah, good no. Minnesota hockey is. Yeah, and it's crazy now. You've seen uh, the the kids that uh, that I was watching growing up that are now uh, got their second generation are coming through. Like Rob right. Stauber was the goaltender, Hobie Baker Award winner, and his yeah. kid is. Uh, was with Rockford last season. Um, Doug Zamolik, a pretty good defenseman, has a couple of youngsters that are kind of in between the AHL and the ECHL. So it's, it's kind of funny to come full circle. I grew up with uh, Jason Blake in Minnesota, and now uh, Jackson yeah. uh, on the Carolina Hurricanes coming out of training camp there. I so know. I don't know if we'll see him at some point here in Chicago or uh, yeah. if uh, I know he had just talking with some of the Carolina people, he had such a great camp. So He really uh, did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, he had a really great camp. And yeah, it's just funny how you said it's like talking about Jason Blake and all these other guys that have just come through and all of that. But going through through your progression of where you started out with Waterloo, especially down there in the USHL, like what's that been like going from like that progression of being down there to you know the American with the with the arrows and even Iowa and you know, even doing your doing your stop in Texas with the Wildcatters. What's that been like just being able to see yourself progress through your career of starting down there and now being with the Chicago Wolves. Yeah. I mean, I'm so fortunate to be with the Chicago Wolves because they run it like an NHL organization. Don LeBay, oh, yeah. the, the owner has had it for all 31 years. He's so loyal to uh, our, us as employees. It's, it's been great. And my, my start into hockey did not work out so great. I was working in Waterloo. Uh, the team did not make very much money. Uh, it was one of those places where the checks come on a Friday and we had four or five employees. And if you were the fifth employee trying to cash your check, uh, there was a good chance it was going to bounce and uh, you'd have to wait till Monday to, to get it. So that kind of cut my first broadcasting career a little short. They also had a right. summer wood bats baseball uh, team that I was working for, which was a lot of fun doing baseball my first year out of college. But uh, right. I was only making $18,000 a year and they owed me $3,000 by the time the summer came around. So, I uh, I got to a taste of the world, real world after that because you, you know as you know coming out of school you have got some student loan debt and stuff like that and if you're not getting paid on a regular basis and you're only making eighteen thousand dollars it's not a not a good way to pay back your loans so I was really fortunate that uh, the ECHL and you know I'm sure a lot of people in Carolina know how big of a boom when I got back into hockey mm -hmm. I think Carolina North and South Carolina combined probably had eleven teams in the ECHL and there's a oh, team yeah. went in and 
in Beaumont, Texas. And there's about seven or eight teams probably coming into the ECHL. And I was able to apply for an expansion franchise that was looking for someone who had a little bit of a sales background. I was working for General Electric at the time and also wanted to call hockey games. And that kind of got my foot back in the broadcasting door and had to work my way up. And then the opportunity to come to here to Chicago, uh, it, like I said, he Don lo- runs this like an NHL team. And it, it, I'm so fortunate to to be here now for 17 straight seasons. No, definitely for sure. And, you know, that's a perfect segue into talking about, you know, what's it been like for you going through the last 17 years with the Chicago Wolves and just seeing the progression of the team. So make sure everyone who is listening to stick around as we get to dive into some of the Chicago lore with Jason Shaver here in a second on a Wolves Wednesday edition of Locked on Hurricanes. All right, everyone, we got to talk about Game Time. And Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. And they also, with Game Time Picks, they filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. The one good thing I like about them is the fact that they curate it to make it easier to save more, not just sports, but concerts, comedy series, and so much more. So let's say you want to go to Allstate Arena and go check out a concert or you want to go to Chicago and check out a theater event and stuff like that. You can get tickets with Game Time. And a good thing, too, is they have this feature called all-in pricing, which if you toggle this feature, it'll actually show you your total up front. So there's really no per- surprise fees at checkout, and you know what you're going to be paying for it right up front. Now, what I really like about the app is their panoramic view seat finder because when you use this feature, you can actually check out your seats before you even buy the tickets themselves. So you don't have to worry about obstructive views, awkward angles, and stuff like that. It takes all that guesswork out for you because when it comes to buying tickets, you really want to take the guesswork out of buying those, and especially you can do that here with Game Time. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on NHL for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again. Create an account and redeem code locked on NHL. That's L O C K E D O N NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Well, it's game time. Welcome back to a segment two of Locked on Hurricanes, your team every day. And then the segment one, we had a nice, great transition to talk about the Chicago Wolves and Jason's entering his 17th straight season as the voice of the Wolves. And Jason, you know, you're entering year 17. You know, when I talked to Courtney on the last episode, she's been there for going on 29 now. Like, what's it been like in your eyes seeing the progression of the Chicago Wolves going from the IHL days when you're talking like the Detroit Vipers and the Cleveland Lumberjacks to now you are in the Central Division, you know, won the Calder Cup a couple times, now you're a five-time champion team. What's that whole journey been like from the IHL to the AHL in your eyes? Well, the IHL was a little bit of a, a different league where you, yeah. you know, actually at the when it first started, the, you know, you mentioned the Vipers, the Minnesota Moose had a team that now mm-hmm. is the the Manitoba Moose, but they were in big markets that didn't have NHL teams or big NHL markets that were able to support two, mm-hmm. and they kind of went probably a little bit too much head to head with the NHL. A lot of the third, fourth line guys of the NHL were first line guys in the American Hockey League. And I think that there's a little bit of a a competition and obviously the NHL is going to win that. But it was a fantastic league uh, for the simple fact that you had guys that played for that organization for a long period of time. I've already mentioned uh, Wendell Young, Mm -hmm. but Steve Malte was a mainstay. He's got all these franchise records that will never be broke for his offensive (laughs) production. Guys like Rob Brown that had NHL careers, had long stints here. And I think that's the that's the biggest difference between the American Hockey League and the IHL was the ability to have guys that fans got to know and got to watch for for multiple years, you know, much like Carolina Hurricanes are accustomed to seeing, you know, Josiah Slavin on the back end or, you know, players like that, that, uh, excuse me, uh, Josiah's playing here in Chicago, but his brother, you know, so (laughs) just building a fan base, it helps to have guys that are here year in and year out. That's the thing that's changed it. You know, we were talking before going on air here that it's crazy. The Wolves and Carolina Hurricanes did not have an affiliation for one season we did have a couple of Carolina Hurricane contracted players here, but there's only four players heading into this opening weekend's roster that played with the Wolves before. So that's just how quick the American Hockey League turns over oh, its yeah. roster, and that is the biggest change. 
Yeah, definitely. For sure. You're talking about Ronan Seeley and Dominic Fensori and just those guys as well. It's just it's crazy when you look at how that ro- where the roster is at now. And like you said, just a year difference where you look at a couple of years ago, you've had guys like Anthony Honka and, you know, just Vasily Ponomarev and mm-hmm. Derek Chekhov is on Carolina. So, yeah, it's a really huge change. And it's crazy, but like you, when you look at the Chicago Wolves and you think of like the AHL, everyone's like, okay, well, you, you know, there's certain teams. Everyone knows the, you know, the Hershey Bears and, you know, you, the some of the big mainstays that you're around like that. But with Chicago Wolves, it seems like it's almost like its own, like you said, it, it runs like an initial organization, but it feels like it's its own entity where it's like, when you think of the Chicago Wolves, like they are like the team. Like, what, like, what's just, the the team as in general like what's what makes it so unique in its own right outside of just being the way it's ran like what's so unique about the chicago wolves in, to, in your opinion well i think it, it starts with 31 years i mean look at the nhl and how much teams have changed over in 31 years in in the nhl the fact that you know the chicago blackhawks have been a mainstay in this yeah. city an original six franchise and to be able to survive and thrive in a market that has had hockey for this long, it, 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 all the sports fans, all you have to mention is the Wolves. And here in the, the city of Chicago, they they represent winning. They represent, you know, the fine community work that Courtney Mahoney and her staff do. You know, you come, there's a pyrotechnic show that is second oh, to yeah. none. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is the same company that's doing Coldplay concerts and stuff like that that does every single Wolves game. So there's just, there's so much added value to just not only the hockey experience but the just the experience in general and the fact that you know on a saturday night we'll have 14 15 000 people uh watching a hockey game and the fact that they've been doing it for 31 years i think that's the two biggest things you know kind of off the ice mm-hmm. success you know the box office but then the fact that you have the five championships too and that's something that you know Wolves fans and and sports fans in a market like Chicago come to appreciate. They expect a winner, and despite the, I think pretty much every sports team you know since the '90s has won a championship in this town, but yeah. only the Wolves have five championships. Like you think about the Bulls, they have six. That's the only team to eclipse what the Wolves have done uh, since their time as as an organization. That's pretty impressive when you think of the success that those. Uh, you know, the Cubs with the World Series, White Sox, a couple, three Stanley Cups. You know, it's pretty impressive yeah. that the Wolves are right there with five. Yeah, no, it really is impressive. Yeah, because you look at the fact that you're talking about, you know, the Bears have been there for so long and you're talking, you know, soccer's been there as well. But, yeah, it's, it seems like with the with the Wolves and even just hockey-related, you got the Chicago Steel, the USHL. It's like there's it's so saturated with so many just hockey and then other sports as well. But to put themselves in a place where it's, you know, doing all – with breast cancer awareness or adopt a dog or mm-hmm. you know mental health awareness or the jerseys and stuff like that it seems like for what you guys do and that and talk about just like on the business side of things it's made it so stable then of course you talk about the hockey operations too of where you're looking at how the roster is where everyone thinks of the 2022 wolves team that won the Calder cup and how just special that team was and how loaded that group was too like what was that like for you just going through that season alone? Because I know everyone's like, I know everyone's gonna be like, why didn't you ask about them? What was that like just being able to call those games and just seeing how great that team was through that run? Well, it's it's funny earlier today, Aaron Schwartz was uh, in town and Wendell Young, and we were just talking about that organization and the players on that. It, it's the the best AHL team maybe in the history of the league. Scott Housen is, you know, the president of the league has gone on record as saying that it, yeah. there was no weakness. I mean, no. you had Alex Lyon and Piotr Kochekov were your two goaltenders. So that that's 1A and 1A, you know. <laughs> yeah, right, basically, yeah. Six defensemen played every single game, but one Griffin Mendel got in one playoff game. You know, it's the, the back end was loaded with talent uh jalen chatfield was such a workhorse uh in that championship run you know jack drury was the number two centerman and he's you know now a number two centerman in the nhl you had stefan nason who scored so many great goals there was no you know they they were able to make trades and bring in a young vasily panamara who you know was used at the nhl trade deadline last year but he was the fourth line center i mean he was 
you know, last year he was the number one center here in Chicago, but he was a yeah. fourth line center on a championship team. It, it, there was no weakness. And Ryan Rosowski was just an unbelievable coach who I don't know that they ever lost more than two or three games in a row. And every time you're wondering like, oh, is this where the wheels kind of fall off the bus? They would win the very next game and win it in convincing fa fashion. It was uh, a relatively easy waltz to a championship, which is awfully tough to do. Yeah, right for sure. Yeah, you know, Orzovsky is just you know you know awesome for him to get the gig in San Jose and what he's done. And then you look at like we talk about uh, Andrew Podorowski, you know, doing his mm -hmm. thing. You know, with you know did in Charlotte, did it with you guys in Chicago. It's been trying to do it with Coachella Valley. You know, back to back. You know, called her final appearances and stuff like that too. It's just it's crazy when you look at that team and it's like how can you top that? But then you look at this team that's coming in it's like there's a lot of exciting names that you're kind of like okay we don't know it might not not might not touch the 22 team but it might come pretty close yeah i mean it'll be interesting to be honest with you you know with my time in the american hockey league it's very unaccustomed that you would have this many young guys and mm -hmm. you know i mean jack Drury got the opportunity to play with good players uh yeah. where you know there isn't a, a veteran uh, really at the forward position here, Josiah Slavin's probably got the, the, the most experience in the back end. You've got Ty Smith and a, a bunch of younger defensemen. So the, the one very encouraging thing is this team is going to get better. What we see here in October versus what we're going to see in March and April. And that is the American Hockey League. That's the new model. Yeah. Uh, you know, their teams get better as the year goes on, you know. Cam Abbott appears to be a great coach and just watching how he runs practice. Uh, you know, it's going to be a fun team to watch, but there might be some growing pains early on with him coaching right. in North America for the first time and having such a young skilled lineup. But uh, there's a lot of guys uh, here that uh, have been talked about all summer long about what they will bring to the table. And I look forward to coming Saturday night to see how it goes. The, the schedule is not a friend for the Wolves. Uh, they played no. Milwaukee three of the first five games. They have a very uh, good team that's returning. They've won the division the last couple of years. They play them five times in the first nine games. Yeah. Uh, and I mentioned three and five against Milwaukee. The, the first road trip is two games against Hershey, and they're the back-to-back -back Calder Cup champs that are returning a lot of players. So I wouldn't judge this Wolves roster in October because it might no, be yeah. tough to come out of the gate with that schedule. But uh, as you pointed out and – you know, just kind of following your off-season reporting uh, with the prospects camps and stuff like that. There's a lot of guys here that they're very excited about. And uh, if they have good years, the Wolves are going to have an excellent year. No, most definitely for sure. Well, everyone, stick around as in segment three. We are going to do a little bit more of a deep dive into the outlook of the 24-25 Chicago Wolves. And looking at a very interesting schedule as well because it's – you thought the AHL schedule was weird. The AHL takes it to the next level. But, of course, talking about a lot of other guys as well that are should be very exciting and fun to watch. So make sure to stick around as we'll talk about that here in a second on a Wolves Wednesday edition of Locked on Hurricanes. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Where can you do that? Well, you can do that at FanDuel.com. Welcome back to a segment three of Locked on Hurricanes, your team every day. And then in segment two, we kind of touched on a little bit of the roster that's coming in and looking at the schedule ahead for the Chicago Wolves. And, yeah, Jason, I completely agree with you in the fact that you look at how they got to play the Milwaukee Admirals. I know you got to play the Hershey Bears. Coachella Valley is going to be another team as well. I'm actually in Palm Springs for the week doing a little early, you know, you know, recruiting or not recruiting, but more of like, you know, what are we looking at for the Coachella Valley Fire? Yeah. <laughs> but it's more so a family vacation. But, you know, it's just funny. It's like I'm like two miles from the arena. It's like, huh. How about that? But you look, and I looked at other parts of the schedule too. It's like, I think for, I forget what month it was, but it's like you have like three different teams in a span of like three days. And then there's like a, like one different team for like in a three, in a day span. Like, what's that like? I know for the players, that's really tough. But like, what's that like for you having to, you know, learn so many lineups in such a short span of time with three different teams in three straight days going into yeah. that? 
I'll tell you, you look forward to Monday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, <laughs> finally, I made it. <laughs> yeah, and and I'm sure you're the same way. Like, you're such a creature of habit. So, you know, I have a laundry list of things that I try to do prior to each broadcast. So when it is three different opponents, uh, right. it is a, 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 a time suck for sure. And I just, sometimes you're like, do I really need to do this? But then you also, it's like, you kind of feel naked if you don't do everything right uh, so you, you're kind of setting your ways the, the way you do things so three three different teams in three days is is not ideal the good news is with the american hockey league the travel is pretty much to the midwest i think one of them we start in grand rapids and then we're home right. for the last two and it's teams that you know we've seen a couple times uh, throughout the course of the year you know flow Sports is the new AHL, mm -hmm. AHL TV this year. So, you know, the great thing is, you know, the week leading up, you can watch a couple of games of the teams that you're seeing. So you'll have a lot of that kind of ID and prep work of the individual players. So it's just updating uh, some stats and stuff like that. And, you know, fortunately, they don't schedule those early in the year. So at least I don't think there's an, an occasion this year where we're playing three and three and it's three teams and the team that you haven't seen yet this season right um, you know so i'll be pretty familiar with the the visiting rosters and after two games with the wolves it's amazing how quickly you become with the in, in sync with you, your own roster but it's it's been fun to, this week watching practice and it's the first time you know monday and then uh here the last couple of days that all the guys from carolina have been sent down and are actually skating together and you can kind of get a look at some of the line combinations but you, you know i'm right. seeing almost all these guys for the first time and just like, all right, who's the tall guy? Who's the short guy? Like, you right. know, what way it is to, to try and ID players uh, quicker as opposed to just trying to recognize them based off a Jersey number, which is sometimes tough to see. Yeah. Especially with, like, we are talking like certain like specialty jerseys and stuff like that. Cause I know, you know, just going to Cleveland and trying to identify some monster jerseys, especially ones like dark number and dark Jersey are like, all right, I might guess on who this is. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely understand. That might be a little tough to be like, all right, which one's which? But like you said, you've been, you know, sitting on some practices. Like who's been kind of like catching your eye early on so far in the first like week of, you know, having all the guys officially in Chicago? So I'm I'm watching more, and this is probably a little too much inside baseball, but I'm not <laughs> watching necessarily what they're doing. I'm scanning the ice mm -hmm. and seeing how quick I can identify a guy. So, you know, I know Nadeau's got an unbelievable shot, but sometimes in these drills, mm -hmm. I'm not watching his shot. As soon as I know, all right, that's Nadeau, I'm off to the next guy, you know, and you can skip a couple guys like right. that story that you mentioned before, Ronan Seeley, uh, right. Ryan Suzuki, Noel Gundler, uh, they're in their second stints so you're kind of chasing through those but you know lego is the guy i'm seeing for the first time you, you know the nadeau and robita just trying to identify right. the differences of them and at least they haven't really been working on the power play or any of the special teams where you kind of have a little bit more time to to watch how guys are playing i just know talking you know briefly with the coaching staff of you know guys that have been impressive in the prospects camp and then the rookie camp and hitting into main camp like bradley nadeau and scott moore are kind of at the top of the list of how well that they've performed so far and those are right. kind of the the big names that you know if carolina had some trouble early on when it might be the first uh, couple call-ups yeah no for sure and you know, we you know, mentioned a few other guys as well and trying to learn about them but you know talk about guys who've you know been there before or coming back or who, who are returning once again i'm really excited for ronan Seeley just to see what he can do for the wolves this year because i know last year you know more difficult season for the group overall but even for him too, trying to be the guy on a team that you know was trying to figure out how do we do this independent thing but now you get you know the reaffiliation you kind of get all the other prospects back in and he can play more of his game and stuff like that. So like, what are your thoughts on just like what Ronan Seeley can do being, you know, someone who's a cog in the wheel rather than being like, okay, you're the guy essentially. Cause I'm really big on him this year in my opinion, but. Yeah. I'm just, on my notes, it, it's his third year now with the team. I think he took a, a good growth step last year. Uh, he took advantage that's power play at times was struggling with a, a number one quarterback in the power play. So he got some power play time prior to that. He, you know, he's used a lot on the penalty kill blocking mm -hmm. shots. So I'm, I'm kind of interested to see how they 
will use him this year because you've got, you know, Dom Fensori back and you've got Scott Morrow. Like, who's going to get the power play time out of that? Right, and, yeah. And, and what is your role? And I think the the greatest asset for Ronan Seeley in his two years pro that we've seen so far is his versatility. So, you know, sometimes it's easier to make the NHL as the fifth, sixth defenseman or the – 10th or 11th forward because you can play a specific role. Uh, you know, Dom Fensori is a little bit smaller in stature, so he probably can't pin guys up uh, in the corner uh, as well as Ronan Seeley. So I think there's a lot of options uh, for right. him to, to get to the NHL. He's a great skater, mm -hmm. uh, so that, that helps. But his ability to play a 200-foot game uh, might lead him to, to an opportunity to the NHL because he can do some different things. Yeah, no, definitely for sure. And you know, you're talking about, you know, with some other guys that were that we mentioned, Old Gunler, who I was really high on going to the rookie showcase, and he absolutely showed out goal and four assists. Obviously unofficial, but him and Gleb Shrekasov absolutely just torched those guys in there. And you know, Gunler is coming back. You know, he dealt, dealt with a lot of injuries last year, but I'm really excited to see what he can do in his second stint back, you know, being healthy hundred percent and you know kind of trajecting what we've all thought he was going to be because I'm really high on him as well. Like, he's been looking really good in offseason. I'm thinking it's like one of those guys that Wolves fans should definitely keep an eye on when it comes to this kid. Yeah, I'm curious too because his first stint with the Wolves, you mentioned injuries. He was injury-plagued that mm -hmm. year uh, with the team as well. It, you know, the one thing that recalling back is a couple of goals he scored is he's got a great shot. You know, he's got a, a, a bigger frame to him and his ability to – come down the wing. So I'm looking forward to him in his second stint here. And, you know, the good news is he is healthy, you know, talking with Ryan Suzuki today after practice, it's the first time he's gotten through training camp and, and been yeah. uh, uninjured, you know, every year, it seems like some a very, very mm -hmm. unfortunate injury happens to him and it's a debilitating injury. Uh, such a great kid. So I, I look forward to seeing what a healthy Ryan Suzuki can it's do right over the shoots this this year too and uh, you mentioned uh Trikazov and they they were talking today about how great of a camp that he had and mm -hmm. you know i think he had four goals in, in the oh, prospect yeah. so mm -hmm. I, I mean uh guy that goes to the net you know those are those are important guys and uh looking forward to to seeing uh, how he looks here starting saturday night yeah, I know, definitely for sure. And I know there's one guy we haven't really talked about yet because there's we don't know what's going to happen with him yet. He was on a PTO with the Hurricanes, but I would love to see if the Chicago Wolves are able to bring him back on an AHO deal, and that's Rocco Grimaldi. I've been high on him for as, as long as he's been in the league. I know in the NHL he did some stints with the Predators. Of course, with the Wolves last year, absolutely went off. So I think it was like the second most points in the league and stuff like that. And I think that we talked you talked earlier about – how there's not a lot of veteran presence on the forward group. I think if the Wolves bring back Romaldi, that is an instant inject of here's your veteran presence and maybe a guy who might get a little letter on his shirt. There might be a little uh, something like the one on my shirt where he has the C because right. he's that guy for me would be a perfect fit for the Wolves this upcoming season. Yeah, I will say last year with the Wolves, he was very good after practice working with the younger guys, uh, you know, having just – gone through training camp with Carolina released from the PTO. I've not heard anything that, that indicates that he's going to end up here in Chicago. Right. Uh, but, but uh, last year <laughs> he, he's kind of, he, he, I, he's kind of like a Connor McDavid of the American hockey league because he's a guy he that really is. a puck in his own zone and skate through the entire team. He's a broadcaster's dream because he'll bring you to the edge of your seat. So, uh, right, right. you know, I'm, I'm all for, uh, Rocco coming back here, but at this point, I haven't seen uh, anything that indicates that he will show up here outside of the fact that he was in uh, Carolina's training camp. But it's kind yeah. of surprising the offensive numbers that he's put up the last couple of years. And obviously, he's played a lot in the NHL too, lower yeah. in the lineup. That he's one of those players that's, you know, they call him the 4A players that are kind yep. of trapped was... in between the American Hockey League and, and the NHL. And you kind of wonder like, man, what more, if you're Rocco, what more do I need to do in the American Hockey League? How do I not have a, a contract at this point? And he's also proven that he can play in the third and fourth line in the NHL. And he's certainly a great enough skater that he can play anywhere in your NHL lineup. No, 100%. And that's just, that's the same thing with like, um, with Andrew Podorowski. Um, I had Andrew Rinaldi, you know, part of the Calder Times, and we we both love, you know, 
Potts, and of course with Rocco, same thing. It's like those are the two guys where you're like, what more can they really do? Because you know, Bodorowski's won a couple of championships. Done, he's been there, done that. Rocco's done the same thing. You know, he's like you said, put up so many points. Like, what more can this guy do? And it's just, it's a weird thing when it comes to the NHL and how they do things. And of course, in the American, you can only have so many veterans because of the veteran role, which I don't think a lot of people really understand about. Because like, well, how come these teams can't do that? Well. The AHL is its own enigma of how they want to do things, especially with the veteran role. Yeah, Podorowski is a very interesting one. I, I think for him, the biggest thing is he just hasn't been in the right organization mm-hmm. at the right time. You know, so often you get your break because a team has a rash of injuries at the forward position and you get a longer look. You know, I think the championship year with the Wolves, maybe Carolina had him one or two games up. You know, that's not enough for a guy to – to to prove his worth and then whoever mm-hmm. he was replacing due to an injury like rob brendamore has not seen enough of andrew Podorowski, but he knows whoever's coming back off the ir knows them well yeah you almost need he's a guy that you appreciate the more and more that you get to see him mm-hmm. and then he signs with seattle which should have been a great opportunity but seattle that first year they had an unbelievable season yeah. and you know he never really Got a call up there. You know, he's with San Jose. So, you know, San Jose is going to be a little bit younger. But he's the type of player, I think, that needs like a full month in the NHL of playing games regularly so you get a better appreciation of what he can do. One or two games, he's not a a player, even though his numbers in the AHL might indicate, but he's not going to wall you enough uh, in one or two games. You need to see a month of of Andrew Podorowski. No, 100%. Luckily, with Ryan being there, he already knows who he is. So that might be a good fit for him as well so before we let you go jason i want to get your opinion on what your outlook is for the 24 25 wolves i know division wise we talk about milwaukee always being good they basically running it back again the texas stars while they do not have maverick bork or you know logan stankoven still a really strong team as well but how do you feel about the chicago wolves coming with the 24 25 season this year that's such a great question, Zach. And I, <laughs> and that and the only thing I regretted about this podcast is coming on in October. I'm like, I really want a month uh, to to see where they're at and how the how quickly that that they can come together because you know these right. prospects outside of you know a couple summer camps and and the rookie tournament they have not played a lot together. Mm-hmm. Milwaukee is returning a lot of players. Grand Rapids has a lot of returning players. Rockford has a lot of young guys that are coming back from last year's team. Iowa spent a lot of money, and I like the example that you said with Texas. I think that's the the best model for Carolina to use moving forward. Texas every year has younger guys, and by the end of the year, they're better. Uh, They probably have maybe a little bit more vets than the Wolves currently do at this time, but you never know what's going to happen over the course of the season uh, if you add players or or get players. So I I can't honestly give you an outlook because it's such a great mystery, but I'm I'm really looking forward to the month of December because I think October is going to be tough with the – five of the six games against either Milwaukee or Hershey. November, you have probably an opportunity to get a little taste of it. And then come December, like, all right, now this team has two months of experience together. What can they do, you know, with two thirds of the season left? You know what? You know, that, that just means I might have to bring you back in December then to get your full answer down on that. So, you know, yeah, I might, yeah. well, might, I, might put a little pin into that and be like, hmm, I might need to bring Jason back for a second run and be like, hey, so where's your opinion this time? <laughs> well, if historically you fall, you know, we play so much of just the Central Division. Right. Yeah. To be a team that is in first place in the Central Division come Thanksgiving and they're mm-hmm maybe going to make the playoffs or maybe come out and there's a team that's going to be sixth or seventh in the central division at Thanksgiving and they're going to be a playoff team. So a lot happens because it is such a young league and Mm -hmm. the roster turnover is so great. Some, some teams need time to come together and you just hope that, uh, you know, given the difficult schedule that you don't get yourself (laughs) in too big of a hole. If you can earn points, you know, early on, that is going to be an immense help to this team that I feel is going to get stronger as the season goes on. No, 100% for sure. So you know what, last question for you real quick. Who are you more excited about to watch or just who are you going to keep an eye on for the first few months and then hopefully, you know, kind of be that guy that's like, okay, 
this one could be it for the Chicago Wolves. I was really looking forward to Jackson Blake, but I think uh, watching the uh, cap gymnastics, uh, you watch your transactions the next three days, you're going to see a lot of uh, no, Jackson yeah, Blake on that. So uh, now I'm going to defer to Bradley Nadeau and Scott Morrow, the two guys that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of the Carolina brass that I've had the opportunity to talk to the last couple of days have talked so glowingly about of, of what they've looked like. So I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how they progress uh, both the uh, very good college uh, seasons a year ago yep. and uh, both come in uh, with very impressive months of September in the rookie camp and then training camp. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they uh, get going here with the Wolves. Yeah, no, 100%. I completely agree with you. I'm excited to see how they do. I'm excited to see what how Cam Abbott does as his first year as a head coach. I know you mentioned him earlier. You know, i big fan of Ruggler BK myself, you know, from the, yeah. Swiss, from the Swedish league. So, of course, you look at the laundry list of guys he's had, Niles Hoaglander, Moritz Sider. Like, yeah, he's got some guys who've uh, made some pretty good uh, deals this offseason, getting some nice contracts. So, having a guy like him, it should be very interesting to see how it works out, especially when you got Felix Hooker Storm, who played in the SHL first year in North America this year. He's Not another guy from. that I haven't mentioned, but – he came to mind and he's just 19 years old and they say he is, I mean, I, I was surprised when I looked at him today. I'm like, he doesn't look like he's 19 years old. He's got a, <laughs> a great uh, physical build already to him. And boy, uh, he's a guy that uh, a couple of people pointed out today uh, of how impressive he has looked. And just going back to Cam Abbott, I've had the opportunity to do some champions hockey league games before the HL season starts. And they always have the coach mic'd up. And I've probably done a half dozen games in which Cam Abbott was coaching. And it struck me watching like oh man he has such a great command of the bench he must be a great guy to play for and then we reaffiliate with carolina and you're like i wonder who they're going to hire as a coach and when i saw it was cam abbott i'm like wow this is going to be exciting i just i from afar uh listening to him mic'd up and watching some and broadcasting some champions hockey league games right. uh yeah. cam was was someone that i had no idea would ever be coaching the chicago wolves but impressed right. me yeah, I know. Yeah, like I said, I'm a big fan of Ruggler. They're my team, and you're hearing that the Hurricanes hired him. Like, all right, we're good. That's the that's the best guy you can pick out right now to do that. So, definitely excited for sure. But Jason, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. This was a lot of fun. And before we let you go, where can people find you on socials? And of course, where can they listen to you make some amazing calls this year for the Chicago Wolves for the 24-25 yeah. season? Yeah, so we're we're back in Chicago. Uh, we televise the home games. It is a uh, a Fox affiliate here, Fox 50 yep. in yep. Chicago. And then Flow Sports, for those of you in Carolina, you can watch all the home and away games. The, the, the streaming on Flow Sports of the home games is our actual TV broadcast. So we're kind of on the road games dictated uh, of the feed that we're getting uh, from the away right. venue. But uh, you can watch every game there. I'm not real. I I have a Twitter account. It's uh, a very very limited Twitter account, which is pretty much just uh, for hockey research. But if you right. want to engage with me on there, uh, I find X to be a wonderful platform because I only follow hockey people and I don't get sucked into the uh, rest. But if you want to get a hold of me uh, on that, you certainly can. It's at the shaves. Honestly. A very S tier Twitter name. It's above A tier. That's how good it is. It's like you know the shaves. Can't go wrong with that for sure. And I'm I'm the same way with you. I'm like if it's sports, fine. If it's anything else, I'm good. Don't need to deal with that. It, it, it's funny you hear all these people complaining because of the. Uh, the, the horrible things on social media platforms and like, well, if you just hire, if you just follow hockey people, it's amazing what's in your timeline. It's nothing but hockey news. It's a beautiful thing. Right. Exactly. Hey, just carry to how you want to do it for sure. But yes, make sure to follow the shaves. Like I said, a great name on an X account. I don't think there's a better one that you can find, but if you want to follow me and all the stuff that I've got going on, it's one true Zach on X. The podcast is LO underscore hurricanes. I do have a link to my bio where you can find all of my articles at the Hockey Writers or just go to thehockeywriters.com. Got everything on the Carolina Hurricanes. I've done a lot of articles over the last couple of days because of just roster stuff that's going on too. But also, Chicago, my Wolves Weekly is going to be starting up very soon. I do have one from earlier in the season, but we're going to be doing that weekly as the season goes on. Really looking forward to covering the Chicago Wolves as well this upcoming year. There's links to my other podcasts and searchcast. You can just look that up on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. And for this show – 
You can just go in onto a podcast platform, look up Blocked on Hurricanes, leave a five-star rating and review. I might just read it on the show. You can also go into YouTube, Locked on Hurricanes. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the bell notifications so you don't miss the show. Hit the thumbs up button. Let me know you like the show as well, especially for this episode because it's awesome to have Jason on and to talk about the Chicago Wolves. But also make sure to share with all other fans that, because, that way because Hurricanes fans and Wolves fans like the show as well. We might get more subscribers because we are over 1,000. Want to keep that ball rolling as the season goes along as well because we want to make them every dayers just like you. But thank you for making Locked on Hurricanes your first show of your listen today. For your second listen, find Locked on Fantasy Hockey, become a fantasy hockey expert, and get the edge over your league mates with daily tips from Steel and Flip. Find Locked on Fantasy Hockey on YouTube wherever you're listening to your podcast. But that will wrap up this edition of Wolves Wednesday. Big thank you to Jason once again for coming on and talking to me. Hope everyone enjoys their Wednesday. And until next time, as always, let's go Kings, but also let's go Wolves.